I've been wanting to make this video for a while. Just um, showcasing all the cool stuff I found in the prototype and comparing the differences between what's in the prototype and the retail version of the game. Before we get to the prototype, let's take a look at some cool stuff I found in the retail version. There's a Game Genie code that displays five numbers on the title screen. I figured out that this number represents the room that each character is in. So if you save the game and then reset, these numbers represent what room that everybody was in during that save. I was hoping that changing these numbers will do something where maybe you could change the room that the characters are currently in when starting the game, but it doesn't work. And it just resets everything and deletes your save, which sucks. <laughs> So I found the RAM address of all the look commands. Now that's like when you look at a fresco or you look at another puzzle like the fountain or the three statues at the end of the game, the knight. Those are all, I call them look commands because when you use the look function, it brings up the puzzle. So I went through all the values in that address and I found some cool stuff. Check it out. So this is one of the things that I found. Now I'm not sure if this was going to be like a puzzle or or maybe this graphic could be from like a quick time event like the chandeliers falling or whatever but either way this is really cool I don't know why it was removed but this is pretty cool find and when trying to look at it the game freezes unfortunately also what I'm gonna talk about when I get to the prototype in the prototype all the doppelgangers don't have their faces I don't know why I don't know if it's a glitch or they just weren't implemented, but the faceless doppelgangers are also in the retail version of the game, which is interesting, including Yamamura. There's Yamamura in the retail version of the game. Too bad he's faceless. <laughs> now these next ones are, are pretty interesting. They seem to be cut graphics from Lady Mamiya. Maybe after the fight, these images were supposed to play in some kind of way, or maybe shown on the screen after you defeat her. But I don't know, check them out. One of my favorite things that I've discovered in both the retail and the prototype is the secret passageway from this green dungeon area that leads to the basement. Check it out. If you knew about this, let me know. Pretty cool. This could definitely be a useful shortcut in a casual playthrough if you left an important item in the basement area. Cool. Let's get to the prototype. The first thing is you'll see this sample text that comes on to let you know that this is just a prototype version of the game or sample version of the game where not all the features are implemented as you'll see. <laughs> the first noticeable difference is the sky in the background is blue as opposed to the purple color in the retail version. There's also some minor differences in the logo. There's like more shading in the prototype, I think. Now when you start the prototype, it brings you here automatically without the cutscene in the beginning. The only way to see the cutscene and if you want to rename your characters is to delete the game save and then start over. Also, unlike the retail version, this cutscene is not skippable, so you have to sit through it. Kazuo's name is here, whereas in the retail, his name isn't there. I don't know why it's like that, but... For some reason, that door slam sound effect doesn't play right there. There's no tonic, and there's no fruit knife in this room. 
the candles have no use because there's no dark areas in the prototype. Something that differs in the prototype is that when you press attack, another dialog box comes up over here indicating that maybe at one point in development that there was going to be more than one enemy on the screen at a time. As you can see, it says one here. Maybe there was going to be two or more enemies. And then with this dialog box, you were going to maybe select which enemy you wanted to attack. Something about the timing of when everybody attacks is a little faster in the prototype. Feels like it's a lot faster. Also, the HP of everybody is a little higher in the prototype. Seems like the enemies are a bit tougher too, so maybe that's why. The weak wood also has a different name here compared to the retail. And there's also no strong board. Although there is an iron plate, which I'll show in a little bit that you can use a code to put in your inventory. Now here, there's an extra log and it's here instead of the ax that's usually here in the retail. Now down here is where you can find the magnet. I had to make some Game Genie codes for me to be able to walk past statues and walk through walls and all kind of stuff. Unfortunately, I've done some testing. I don't see a use for the magnet. I've tried using it on statues, other metal type objects, but so far, haven't found any use for it. I've tried it against enemies, against the knights. Yeah, nothing. Now this room is different. You'll see that the photo is right there in the retail. The broom is not supposed to be there. It's in a different room. The replacement camera is supposed to be there. And then you'll see the circular object, which is Akiko's replacement item. The pills or the cookie, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Here you'll notice these two chairs. These are not in the retail version of the game. My theory is that these were probably similar to the bats and the knights, where if you walk into them, it'll just be like a forced battle type of thing. Here there's no tonic on this table. Something interesting you'll notice here is that when you walk on two specific tiles, you'll see a message that comes up that's not in the retail version. Mishi Mishi. This basically means like a creaky floor or creaky floorboard or something like that. I made a Game Genie code that revealed these holes in the floor. My theory is that these holes were supposed to appear when you stepped over them and maybe possibly trap somebody you would have to rescue them. This room has some different stuff. The log is missing from here and its place is another type of spear. And there's also a fork over there, which there was supposed to be a wood over there in the retail version. You could just walk right through the nights. The encounters don't trigger. And also that tonic that's in the retail is replaced with the sticky boots. The sticky boots are useless because you could just walk over the sticky floors in the prototype without worrying about getting stuck. As you saw right there, the room leading from that room to here is missing. There is a RAM address which brings it up, but you can't access it in normal gameplay of the prototype. This message doesn't appear here in the retail version. I have to double check, but I think this note is the same that was supposed to be on the wall right here in the retail version. I believe this NPC right here is here in the retail. The diary in the prototype is pretty much useless. Even if you have the diary key, it, you can't open it and you can't take it. So that kind of sucks. Now, as you can see, this room is not dark, so you don't need the candles, like I said earlier. Those spirits that capture you, they don't work, so you could just walk right through them. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, yeah, look at how slow everybody walks <laughs> in the prototype. You really need to get the pulley. The fire extinguishers don't seem to work. Also, something I forgot to mention earlier is that the, the menus are reversed. So when you open the menu, it's on the left side instead of the right side. And as you can see in this room, the bats, they don't work. <laughs> and they're just floating there. And you'll notice that the fresco theme is missing. The boulders don't seem to work as intended, 
in the prototype, but if you just press the select button, they start to move, but really slowly, and they don't cause any damage. Now this dialogue is also not in the retail version. The NPC up there has different dialogue. He's basically asking for help. And when you go to talk to them, they're asking for you to give them your tonic. I tried to Google Translate what this says and he's saying something about giving you a hint about a room with flames. I'm not sure what else is being said here. If somebody else wants to help translate it, let me know. And if you say no, they say something different. These enemies have a different sprite. You'll see that their mouths are closed in the prototype. Maybe their mouths were supposed to open and close, but in the retail version, their mouths are just open. So, I'm not sure. Would have been cool to see it open and close. <laughs> The spear is already on the floor. You don't even have to use your prey points to extract it. You could just take it. In these puzzle interactions, only the inventory of the person leading the party is visible. Another important thing, tonics don't replenish the prayer points when you're in a battle, so it's not wise to use them during battle because it doesn't refill everybody's prayer points. So you can only use them when outside of battle to refill prayer points as well as HP. The weapon that's over there in the retail version is not present. Now here's another cool thing that I found. In the prototype, the generator is considered like a puzzle, where in the retail version it's not like that. Check it out, you can see a first person view of the generator, which is cool. I don't know why they removed this. But it doesn't really have a purpose because there's no dark areas, like I said. If you get caught by these guys, it's over. Especially if you don't have any prey points. They're much more aggressive in the prototype. And if you get caught, it's like almost impossible to escape the enemy. And if you don't escape by the time the battle is over, that character will die. Which is unlike the retail version. Oh, and another thing. When your character dies in the prototype, they disappear. So if they had an important item on them, that item is gone. Whereas in the retail version, you could still grab an item from them because they don't disappear. The note that's usually there in the retail version is missing. And those gloves are definitely not there. Now this NPC is not normally here in the retail version. As you'll see a little bit later, these statues can't be pushed. None, none of the statues in the game can be pushed, but there's a way around it, as I'll show in a little bit. Now here's an NPC that's not in the retail version. And that blue candle is not normally there. Now this whole area right here, the layout is different. If you don't have the walkthrough walls code on, you can't access this area. Now check out this ghost NPC. This is the ghost that knocks over Yamamura when you're walking back from the lake. Its sprites are a little glitchy. But unfortunately, you can't talk to it. Also, another interesting thing I want to point out while we're here. The iron key is here. Now in the retail version, the iron key is back up there um, where I was showing before where you can't really access it. The funny thing about the iron key being here is that you need the iron key in order to get to this area. So <laughs> maybe because this is a sample version of the game, they did that on purpose so you can't really progress. And just like the bats and the knights, the mirrors also don't trigger their encounters. So in order to get into an encounter with the mirror, I had to find the code in RAM to trigger their encounter.
Another really cool find. You'll see that the mirror in the prototype has a reflection of somebody else. Now, I don't know who that's supposed to be. It doesn't really look like Taguchi or Kazuo or anybody else, but it's really interesting. Possibly one of the other people who were exploring the mansion before them. Walking through water glitches the character sprites out a bit. Since you can't push any of the statues, the amulet, it's already visible there, so you could just take it. This room doesn't have the gloves. In the prototype, you can get into an encounter in this room. I've actually gotten into an encounter with Asuka's doppelganger in this room before. Very weird. There's no statue there, so the bucket and the blood is not even needed. Also, the bucket is not even found through normal gameplay. You could put it in your inventory with a RAM code. The gloves don't seem to work. Also, it seems the axe is also named something different in the prototype versus the retail. <laughs> and this guy tells you nothing. Now, the shovel isn't needed at all. The low key or basement key is already there. <laughs> you can get into an encounter while walking with Yamamura. Let's drink from the fountain anyway, what the hell. Since those spirits don't work properly, these rooms are pretty broken. There's another Yamamura scene down here when you go into the basement, along with a forced encounter. Depending on who you are playing as, a different doppelganger will show up. This extra patch of fire is also not in the retail version. Now, fortunately, giving the shovel to this guy doesn't do anything, so you can't put the fire out. I did make a game genie code that replaces all the fire with water in the basement, but for some reason, it's glitchy and doesn't always work. Don't know why. There's no blue flame to extinguish, so the gem is kind of pointless. This glitch sprite right here is the diary key. And the weird thing about the diary key is that it's a weapon and not an item. You can hack it into your inventory as an item, but it still doesn't open the diary. You don't actually get poison from those skeletons. <laughs> and as usual, the minecarts don't really serve any purpose. I wonder if they did at one point. Hmm, I don't think that message is in the retail. If it is, it's definitely not in this room. Now, because you can't push the statues, you can use a rope to clip through them. Or use the Game Genie code I created to just walk right through them. Here's another one of those ghost NPCs. And there's a bunch of dialogue here that's not in the retail. The layout is also different. In the retail, there's those little um, those little spaces that you can duck into to avoid the boulders. But since there's no boulders here, they don't have them. And also, you'll see in a second that there's statues that are added instead of the areas where you can duck into. Right here.
just walk on the ice without needing a pick. This looks different right here as well. I believe that this one right here was removed in the retail. Now right here you can see the pulley is inside the wall. Luckily I made a walkthrough walls code. One of the rings is on this side, is over here instead of being over here. In the retail, in order to open this door from this side you need the two key. But here you could just use Emmy's regular key. In the retail and in the prototype, you can actually clip through this barrier here using the rope or the bow. And again, this little stump here was removed in the retail. Now here's something really interesting. Normally, in the retail version, this area down here is empty. There's nothing here. But in the prototype, you see a second gas container. My theory is maybe at some point you were supposed to refill the generator, which would have been interesting. Maybe like the lights would have shut off at this point and you had to make your way back through the mansion without any lights on, which would have been cool. It's also a weird glitchy something up here. I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be a spirit. This NPC right here says something different. I think he's telling you to use that gas container that's over there. Which that definitely tells me that the generator was supposed to be filled up a second time. No glass here blocking the way. Now this is interesting to me. This statue here is blocking the path to get to the two keys. Without my walkthrough statues or walkthrough walls code, you can't get to them. Here, there were supposed to be spirits instead of the knights. So this whole area is kind of pointless because the, the ring is on the other side that I was already at. <laughs> is it me or, or the mice and the cats moving faster in the prototype? I'm just noticing that. The blue candles are actually multi-use items, so you really only need to pick up one to place all three. Same thing goes with the slides. This room's layout is different as well. This whole overpass is, is removed in the retail. My theory is that this room was supposed to have the spirits in here and you were probably supposed to duck under this so you won't get caught. Now when you walk through this room, you get stuck right here so you have to use a walkthrough wall code. Giving the rings to the guard doesn't make him disappear, so I just walk through him. Now this part coming up is extremely glitchy. It could take a few tries to get Yamamura to, to trigger properly. When I was first trying to get this to work, Yamamura would be like inside the wall and, he, and you weren't able to get the text dialogues to trigger, but somehow I got it to work. As you saw there, it, Taguchi just kept walking past the wall and the game soft locks here. Then also the game can freeze like this too. Hmm, that didn't work either.
got it to work that time. Not sure why. <laughs> Oh, and on a side note, if you had the flashlight, you can get rid of the barrier yourself without Yamamura. Same thing goes in the retail version too. And here's one of the coolest things I found. The Yamamura cutscene has different music. The song used in this cutscene fits perfectly with the length of the cutscene, whereas in the retail version, the song used is the, the one after you defeat Lady Mamiya. They reused it for the Yamamura cutscene, and the length of it doesn't fit properly. You, you, you could hear that it gets cut off. So you, you'll hear now that this song fits perfect with it. notice here that the door isn't open as it is in the retail version so you have to use the two key to enter also another weird glitch is that once you trigger the Yamamura cutscene any previous rooms that you've met up with Yamamura in triggers the cutscene <laughs> it's so weird as you'll see here And then sometimes after you trigger the Yamamura cutscene, all the other characters like glitch out and you sometimes somebody will disappear for good <laughs> and then other times they'll just glitch out like this. Don't know why that part is so broken. And unfortunately from here, Lady Mamiya just floats there and none of her dialogue or cutscenes trigger. The game pretty much can't be beat, can't really be completed. As you saw there, the dress is a one-use item, instead of it being infinite use like in the retail. In order to open up the pathway here, in the retail, you have to be level 16. In the prototype here, you have to be level 18 for that to happen. And also, these statues don't actually disappear, so you can light the candles and use prayer points to make the path, but the statues don't actually disappear, so you have to walk through them. But as you'll see here, the doppelgangers do not spawn, Lady Mamiya doesn't spawn, there's no enemies here. Now to open the door here, you need the two key in the prototype, and it's actually the gold key that you need in the retail. Only one slide needed instead of three. There's no way to get to the iron key. You're gonna have to clip through walls. Now you'll see this room, besides the fresco in here, this room is empty. The skeleton that was here and the blood writing that was over here is missing in the prototype. These boxes are over here. I've tried to test them. There's no use that I can find. I was I was thinking maybe they can be used against enemies to, you know, maybe to trap ghosts or something or possibly another storage item slot, but I think that's highly unlikely. Yeah, so as of now, I have no clue what these boxes were intended for. There's also two more boxes in this room, 
you'll see here that the layout of this area is very different and the blood that's in the retail is replaced with regular water here and you can't actually cross it so you have to use walk through wall code in order to get to the other side. This room has a tonic in it where in retail there's nothing in here. And this, this part is very different. Not sure how you were supposed to make it across. Yeah, because this layout doesn't really make sense. Because if you go in through here, you were just going to get trapped in the sand. How are you supposed to make it out over here to go here? I don't know. And then also the blood writing and the skeleton is also missing from here. And just like I showed earlier, you can use the, the mallet to break through here. And you can only break through that side. You can't use the mallet on this side of the wall. It won't work. This room is a bit different. There's no mallet in here, so if you don't have one from before, you're not going to be able to get out. And there's no mirror here to let you know where to use the mallet. And there's no NPC. So as far as the main gameplay, that's pretty much it. But there's a lot of other stuff. If you use the RAM code and, and, and get into an encounter with Yamamura, he's pretty much unbeatable. Now let's check out another more recent discovery I made. I said earlier I was going through all the values of the look command address and I found a removed puzzle. Check it out, it's the lake. If you pay very close attention to the Sweet Home commercial, you can see this at the, the bottom right corner. And I've always wondered, what what is that? That's not in the game. But I was lucky enough to find it in the prototype. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much use. I can't find, I mean, I've tried pretty much every item and nothing seems to happen. I would love to know what was supposed to happen here. And as you saw just now, the dialogue box for the lake was all glitched out and you couldn't read any of the text, but I found a way around it. If you look at a fresco normally first, without the code, and then engage the code afterwards, and then look, you can see the message. This message is saying something like, there's something in the middle of the water And then there's a second message. To see the second message, you have to take the code off, look at the fresco, and then engage the code. And then you'll see this message, which says something like, I could see the water. Now like the bats, there were supposed to be crows. Now they're not normally seen in, in the gameplay, but you can put it into your inventory and then swap it with another item and then you can see them. It shows up as a glitch sprite, but if you leave the room and come back, you'll see the crow. The crow can actually be used as a weapon. <laughs> If you wanted to know what Emmy's key is supposed to look like, check this out. It's the heart key from the official manual. Now, this sprite for the key only exists in the prototype. And if you want to know what Kazuo's lighter is supposed to look like, here it is. Now, here's like a thermos or a flask or something. I've tried to test it out and there doesn't seem to be any intended use. I tried using it on the fountain and in the lake by the water. Does, there's no function for it, unfortunately. Would love to know what it was for. 
Here's an unused torch. Maybe it was supposed to light a greater area than the candle. If that's true, this would have been helpful if you did have to refill the generator and maybe you had to make your way back using the, just the torch to get back to the generator with the second gas container. Now there's no strong board in the prototype, but there's an item called iron plate or iron board or something like that. I've tried to place it in between gaps and it doesn't work. This knife is not a weapon, it's an item. Again, no, no intended use for it that I can find. That's the alternate red flashlight. This can be used against the bats. I haven't tried any other enemies. And the magnet, to me the magnet is the most mysterious item. Like, what could this have been used for? Here's the bucket. No use for it here. You can fill it with blood from the fountain, but there's nowhere to use it. Now we're going to check out some rooms that were removed. Two rooms that are in the retail version that were removed. One is the room before the second floor, and the other removed room was the hallway before the lake. They can only be accessed with the codes. And then there's two new rooms that are not in the retail, and they're not normally accessible in the prototype. They can only be accessed through the codes. These two rooms are very interesting, and I'm not sure where they were supposed to lead to. So you have to engage the code and then switch to another character in order for you to go to the other room. And then you have to turn the code off in order for the character to be visible. And then sometimes the game will freeze or eject it out to another room. Yeah, really weird. <laughs> and I got ejected right out here, which is weird. Now here's gonna be one of the unused rooms. Pretty interesting hallway. I wonder where it was intended to lead to. Possibly a shortcut? Who knows? Now here's another new room. This room is vertical. Would love to know. Would love to know more information about those two rooms. Speaking of new rooms, here's another interesting thing that I found. With the Game Genie code that I made up, I was able to force an encounter in safe rooms, meaning rooms that you're not supposed to get into encounters in, like the first room of the game. You're not supposed to get into a, f a battle with an enemy here. But if you force an encounter here, sometimes the room glitches out, as you'll see. And if you walk on a specific tile, it triggers this weird, glitchy room that plays another one of the unused songs. Walking on some of these tiles may crash the game, so you have to be careful.
And speaking of unused music, I made some Game Genie codes to be able to play the unused songs. The only weird thing about the code is that you have to walk down these steps in this specific room only. <laughs> I don't know why, it just happens to be that way. This code that I came up with reveals a couple of unused animations, one for the chairs and one for a removed zombie NPC. why they removed him. Maybe he was too graphic. <laughs> Here I was messing around with some, some codes related to weird battles and stuff. I came across a glitch that sent me to an unused room that played one of the unused songs. So that does seem to be pretty much it with what I've found significant so far. Every once in a while I'll poke around and see if I find some 
There doesn't seem to be a way to beat the game, unless there's something in the ROM where it triggers the end cutscene or something. There's still a possibility of me finding something like that. But before I go, wait, there's more. There's actually an earlier build of the game than this prototype. A Twitter user posted some behind the scenes footage of the making of the game. Seems to be from some kind of Capcom promotional video collection or something. There's not much info on it and I don't know any more about it than this particular post. But it's very interesting and it shows some early beta footage that definitely predates the prototype because there's some very interesting differences. Look, you can see right there, that's the room with the fountain. Hey, look, it's Yamamura, what he's supposed to look like with his face. <laughs> there's, a, there's already a lot of differences. The character sprites look different. Well, Emi and Kazuo look similar, but Asuka, Taguchi, and Akiko look very different. And this area seems blocked off, so you can't go back to the beginning. If this is Lady Mamiya's room, that this couch over here was removed. There's no gold key, and there's no fresco here. The layout of this area looks very different. This is weird. This whole section looks different. And over here, is there like another dock for the boat to go to? This fire wasn't here. And you can see the menu is on the left side, just like in the prototype. I'm going to call this the early beta, it's just to differentiate it. Look, you can see the holes. Huh. The incinerator is more to the left in this build, and it's also a different color. This is very interesting too. The menu over here is different. The weapon slot is missing. Also for the, the I guess the weak wood is this. And look, right here, this is the iron plate. And look, Asuka has a torch. So these unused items early in development were at one point used for something. Look at how different this looks. And one last thing I want to show is the commercial. You can see at the beginning of the commercial, the sprites from that early beta are used here. But here it switches to the regular sprites that are in the prototype and the, the retail. Although this had to have been later on, at least in this part, because the menu is on the right side. So they're kind of mixing both early beta, prototype, and retail versions in this commercial. Look, there's the lake puzzle. And this right here, I was trying to look for this. I was hoping I was going to find the POV of the fireplace. Maybe in the early beta, this may have been a puzzle. Because why would they show it here in the commercial if it wasn't part of the game, at least at one point? Super interesting. So yeah, that's it. I'm hoping one day that that early beta version gets dumped and I could check it out. But uh, it's probably highly unlikely that that'll ever happen. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy, check out some of my other videos on Sweet Home. I have some speed runs. I have some other prototype videos, video game playthroughs. Also, check out my music.